For years, laptop manufacturers have promised us modular GPUs, but they've quite often failed after just one revision. I thought the same for Framework until today. We finally have the second version of the Framework 16, and it also has that modular GPU that you can upgrade to right now if you have the first one. This is a classic framework, so everything comes separated and we're gonna need to build it together. One bezel, two bezel. We have our keyboard. Oh, stickers, manuals. We got our spacers. Oh my gosh, they sent us four different types of spacers. Oh, we got lavender. We have color shift, we have black and black. So we got three different ones. You'll see it in just a little bit here. And the spacers, well, they fill the space, uh, depending on where your trackpad actually lies. And then it's the same with these two, the macro pad and the numpad. With this device, you can choose if you want your keyboard centered, if you want it off to the side, and then you can slot in a numpad. They have a couple different options there. These are the modular IO that you can slot into the side. And it looks like we've got a whole bunch of different ones from an expansion card, to an SD card, to a USB-A, to an audio, USB-C, micro SD, and an HDMI. I've been frequenting the Reddit lately. I saw someone who tried to fit like two or three USB-Cs on one of these. It's a good question. Why can't we do that framework? Our included screwdriver, the two bits that you will need to build your framework. And on the one side here, we've got our SSDs, which you can either bring your own or buy directly from their site. More space, oh my gosh, how many spacers do we have? Three more, except one of them is an LED matrix. We're definitely gonna plug that one in. Crap, you get a lot of crap with your laptop. RAM, again, same story. You can either bring your own or buy directly from them. In this case, we got 32 gigs total of 5,600 mega transfers per second. A power cord, about three feet. It's more than enough because you also have the other side, which is the brick. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, yes, this is their new 240 watt power adapter over USB-C. And considering this laptop is able to draw up to 160 watts total, having a 240 watt charger means you can still trickle charge a bit, even if you're driving the full spec of this thing, which is fantastic. And then the other half of the power brick, which, hey, modular USB-C. Oh man, this one's a lot longer. Uh, probably like six feet or so with a right angle adapter, which is kind of nice for your laptop. Finally, the laptop. It's very heavy, wow. Is there anything else in here before I close it all up? Nope. Time to slip it out of its paper packaging. Oh, there we go. Wow, it's a framework laptop. I say that because it looks remarkably similar to the last one, which is a good thing because again, how you can upgrade and Again, the GPU in here could actually go in your older one. We'll get into that a little bit later, but you'll notice it's missing a few parts. We need to decide our IO. Um, I'm just gonna put whatever ones are open. You have a transparent USB-C one now? Okay, that's kind of cool. Now plugging these in, there is actually recommended slots depending on where you're plugging in what configuration. For example, the USB-A ports, they don't actually recommend you plug them in the top slots here because they use more power. So we're gonna make sure we put this one in the bottom. And our USB-C, because that one does our charging, we're gonna make sure we put it at the top. So you wanna make sure you're referring to the manual slash the website. And now I have full IO. Lock that in place. Beauty. Actually, we should look around the other side here. At the very back, we have a USB-C port, and that is for our GPU, which you can kind of see the outline of it here. In this case, the Framework 16 can now come with a 5070. It's a mobile 5070, obviously. You're not getting desktop performance in it, but it's still an upgrade over the older version, which you can still buy. There's a Gen 2 variant now. Move the plastic cover, so that way we can install our keyboard. I feel like I want to get this thing fully configured first, and then we can take a tour of the exterior here. There's a lot of screws to get into here, like 17. They're labeled in which order you're supposed to unscrew them, which is nice. Lift up our top cover. Oh, there we go. There's the inside of the framework. This is why you buy this laptop, because you get easy access to do your upgrades to our memory right here, as well as our storage on the side. And this is their newly designed cooling system for the Framework 16. And that new cooling system actually uses Honeywell PTM very similar to the stuff we carry on LTT store instead of liquid metal, which means that when you are swapping it out, because that's the whole point of this, it should be easier to manage because liquid metal can sometimes be a little daunting. Let's install our storage. We'll go with our Western Digital two terabyte and onto our RAM, which we'll get out here. Boop. If you've never installed any of these products before, whether it's been in a laptop or even a computer at all, thankfully all of these QR codes 
that you see. When you scan them, they'll take you to an instruction on their website that'll help you walk through and install them. I'm feeling pretty confident today, so I'm just gonna go for it. I almost messed that one up, but that's okay. It's installed now. Boom, there we go, baby. Our RAM is installed. While we have it open, let's look at the rest of the computer. On the side here, you can see our MediaTek Wi-Fi 7 chip, also Bluetooth 5.4, and our battery down at the bottom here, which is 85 watt hours. It's a pretty good sized battery. I mean, depending on how much power you're drawing that is, but again, you can replace it. it looks like it's only three screws to get the battery out and like one cable under there somewhere, which is fantastic. Our speakers on the sides here of the keyboard. And again, that cooling system that I talked about up at the top. And then under here, under this little flap, once you get it all the way off, boop, this is what you would unscrew if you wanted to remove or install a new GPU. Okay, I guess we should install our keyboard though. <laughs> There's so many parts to this laptop that I'm like, scatterbrained looking everywhere. We have to do a numpad though, right? Or the macro pad. So we gotta install our keyboard. You also gotta make sure you plug in this cable right here after you screw it all down. This is the cable that bridges the whole top of the keyboard and your trackpad into your main board there. 17 screws, keyboard time. Oh man, isn't that cool? It's so satisfying just to click down. I do like the packaging of everything. All recyclable, it seems. It's all cardboard, or the only piece of hard plastic was covering the, the board here. Trackpad. Oh, we gotta do the LED matrix. It'll probably drain my battery faster, but it's gonna look so much cooler. What? So I have to choose between having a numpad or an LED matrix? It is kind of cool how fast you can swap that out, though. Oh, yeah. Okay, now I need a different spacer. What color is this one? Let's do the orange spacer. This is gonna be like when you let an eight-year-old kid draw on a laptop, dude. It's gonna be so all over the place. <laughs> Wait, oh no, this one doesn't go here. Do I have to just use the lane? Oh, no, I don't want the orange anymore now. I want the lavender. Heck yeah. <laughs> what do you guys think? The last thing we need to put on it is a bezel. Actually, I don't remember how these go on. Oh. It was really that simple. Framework, you probably make a decent device. I did not do it justice today by having one lavender in the orange bezel. <laughs> but hey, perfect. As for the rest of the build quality, the screen itself, I've heard that they've redesigned this top shell to make it a bit stronger. And what I can say is, I'm pushing on it pretty hard in order to get any flex. So mission accomplished from there, I guess. But even just resting my arm on here, I've noticed that these spacers are different heights. So like my fingernail or my arm is getting caught and apparently some people online are saying their arm hair is getting pinched in these gaps. As for typing on the keyboard, it's got a little bit of flex. It's not the worst I've seen on a laptop. Thonk's pretty good, but I don't know if I like that thonky feeling compared to my daily driver Lenovo here if I just were to type. Yeah, this keyboard's a lot more rigid, so I would say not the best keyboard I've typed on, but maybe that's the sacrifice you pay in order to be able to swap it out and change it. And it's definitely a bit weird when you have it open, you kind of have this like shelf look at the back. I don't know, I, it's everyone's personal preference on that. It's a chonky laptop, so I think it's probably okay if it means you get the performance, which I guess we're gonna find out here by booting it up. And as it boots up, I'll tell you about our sponsor. Thanks to StarTech.com for sponsoring this video. Connect up to three 60 Hertz displays for your laptop thanks to their newest docking station. Now with DisplayLink based HDMI and DisplayPort outputs. Transfer large files thanks to the 2.5 gig ethernet port and keep your laptop charged with up to 140 watts of power delivery. Whether you're using macOS, Windows, or Chrome OS, you'll get reliable multi-monitor support and a host of IO options. Check it out today by using our link in the video description. What the hell is that? Booting up the screen looks fantastic. It's almost the exact same as last version. It's the same resolution, the same brightness, the same refresh rate, but it supports G-Sync now and Advanced Optimus, which is kind of important to mention. If you are wanting to grab the new GPU, the 5070, and throw it in your old Framework 16, to get the full benefit of it, you actually need to get the second version of the display. Without it, the Advanced Optimus doesn't work very well, or at all. The TLDR for Advanced Optimus is 
If you don't have it, your computer can struggle to switch between running natively on the iGPU versus your dedicated graphics card. And in this case, with a dedicated graphics card, you're gonna want to have those features. So keep that in mind if you're wanting to upgrade your old one. Yep, there's the 5070 that I mentioned. It's an eight gigabyte card and it draws 100 watts on the chip. And the CPU that's powering this thing is the Ryzen AI9 HX370. You can also get the 350 version if you would like, but in our case, the top of the line model, it can boost up to 5.1 gigahertz on all 12 cores or 24 threads, which kind of makes this thing a monster. Well, hopefully for gaming. We'll get into the benchmarks in gaming a bit later. And if you wanted to, you could load this thing up with 96 gigabytes of RAM, which I don't know what you would need 96 gigabytes of RAM in a laptop for, but hey, it's an option for you. I was told we need to update the NVIDIA drivers. Apparently as of like two days ago, there was new drivers that will make this thing. So keep that in mind when I bring up the labs numbers in a couple minutes here, they are on an older version. I kind of keep referencing the old Framework 16, but I think it's really relevant because a lot of people might just be interested in buying the GPU. If you are buying this GPU for your older device, you need to make sure you do a BIOS update on it. If you don't, it won't work. And you know, that would be terrible for you. So make sure you update your BIOS and every other drivers before you slot in your new 5070. I really like this trackpad so far. Can I do my two fingers? Can I do all my gestures? Yeah, three finger swipe. I can't tell if I'm messing up my gestures or if the laptop is messing it up. Okay, I think I was messing it up. Yeah, no, the trackpad feels very, very good. I actually really like this trackpad. All right, now that our drivers are up to date, we obviously have to push this full display. So let's watch a YouTube video. 100% volume, because why not? So loud. Speakers are pretty great, but the display, I am not a fan of. I don't know if I'm catching the light wrong, but there is some weird coloring on these black bars that almost comes across like gray or blue. It looks a lot better on the camera than when I'm looking at it in person, even when I'm looking at it like right now. So I pulled up the SDR grayscale tracking that our labs did, and it seems that I might be onto something because apparently there's a noticeable cyan tint to the display. It seems to start okay in the lower brightness settings, but as you increase the brightness, it seems to track a bit higher than it's intended, which is why when we're on almost max brightness mode, am I actually double check? Oh, we were on like mid. Oh, now that I'm even full brightness, I can see it even more, but you start to get a cyan tint on the whole screen. So I definitely saw it. It just doesn't show up for you guys, which is a little disappointing. I wish I could replicate it better for you. And with the setting automatically manage color for apps set to on, we appear to get 99.5 of the sRGB scale, which isn't great. Cause again, it starts to trend into that green territory, green slash blue, which is why we get that cyan color effect. I think it's fine for the average user watching a YouTube video or a movie. I would not do any professional work on this screen, whether that's Photoshop or video editing of any sort you would need a mastering display, which maybe you could plug in to the back of the dedicated GPU, but I don't think I would use this screen. The speakers though, those are much better. I actually really like these speakers. They're shooting out the side here. They're not down firing into our soft table or directly at you. Sound very good. And I was on like 50% volume there. If we crank this bad boy. Oh yeah. Those would be the highlight of watching content on this by far. Cyberpunk, baby. I'm gonna play with a trackpad because this is a laptop gaming experience. I plug in your mouse and you start installing software. Not okay. All right, Dan's got a new mouse suggestion. Man, that, those fans are going, aren't they? Holy, I, I haven't even moved yet. All right, let's go kill some people in the street. Now that I'm running around a bit, our FPS seems to be averaging Almost 80, it's sometimes touching it. Our 1% lows seem to be around the 70 FPS mark, but occasionally if it like loads a new area, it dips pretty aggressively. We are on medium settings and this is a 1600p screen. So it's a bit higher to drive than a, oh my gosh, I probably shouldn't have done that. It's a bit higher to drive than a standard 1080p screen. And again, I think I mentioned it, it's a 16 by 10 aspect ratio as well. Overall, this is a very, very good gaming experience at this resolution and these settings. 
And Labs seems to be on the same page as well. We actually tested it with the old Framework 16. In the Labs test, it seems that Cyberpunk was the one that had the biggest difference between all of our comparison units. And our comparison units were the old Framework and the old GPU that it came with, which was the 7700S. And what we did was we actually took the new GPU in the old Framework as well, and we actually took the old GPU in the new 16. It's a bit of a mismatch here, but it's fine. As you can see, the brand new configuration that we have, it topped our charts with a 128 FPS average in our Cyberpunk. And again, the old framework with the 5070 just fell just short of that. So again, the new GPU really is a big boost here. And when we get into our F1 testing, F1 2024, you can see that with that new 5070, either in the old or the current gen framework, they are almost identical, both in our 1200p test and our 1600p test. And it's a very similar story in Total War Warhammer 3 as well. The biggest bump is definitely just because we have a better GPU. That fan is off-putting a lot of heat, which is a good thing. It means it's getting the heat away, but it is quite loud. If you had headphones on, I think you'd probably be okay. You probably wouldn't notice it that much. But even just sitting here trying to have a conversation with Bell or Bjorn, our camera guy here, I'm struggling to hear them at a normal talking volume. How long is it gonna stay at full blast? Oh my God. There we go. Slowly starting to tune down now. We had that game closed for almost a minute though. This is a laptop though, so let's talk about the battery results because you might be taking this thing on the go. And even though it's the same size battery as the last Framework 16, we got over an hour better on our battery test. And that was just doing a Plex playback stream, which, is quite impressive, and that I think goes to both the CPU and the GPU in this. They are a little bit less power hungry than last year, especially the CPU. So it's kind of cool that you're getting the same size battery and getting much better performance. Get the peel off the camera. As for the camera included, you'll notice it's at 30 FPS as opposed to 60 FPS like the last one had. That might be a trade off for you, but it does have a bigger and better sensor. And of course, you still have your hardware switches. So if I hit the that's the microphone cutoff, and it does have a camera kill switch, which, yep, that killed the camera feed. Now that I've made it full screen, I look super grainy. We'll have to see if it actually turns out like that or if it's just because I'm watching it on this display. We've went to ledmatrix.frame.work, and that's currently the way to get your little LED modules set up. And we've connected our right one here, and we can kind of change some default configs. It's like kind of cool, but it also seems, oh, wow, you can crank that brightness though real high. It seems kind of weird to do it through a website instead of like an application. I mean, then you don't have the overhead of an application running in the background, I guess, but I don't know if this website ever goes down and you can't change it or if for some reason frameworks all of a sudden done and you can't manage this website anymore, you're stuck with whatever you have. So overall for this device, it seems like a really compelling option for those who maybe purchased the last version and are just wanting the GPU or the new display, or if you're wanting to get into the framework family. The biggest problem I have, which I didn't bring up until now, is the price. This current config is about 3,000 US dollars for this laptop. Now, that is unbelievably expensive for a mobile device, and you can get some that are more and some that are cheaper from different brands. What you are buying though, is the upgrade path. You are buying the ability to hopefully in a year, add a different GPU to it, which now Framework has followed through on that promise, considering we have a 5070 now. The biggest issue I have as well, is if I'm going from my old Framework to the new GPU, I also need that new display. And total, that almost costs a thousand US dollars. It's so unbelievably cool. I think it's just too expensive for the average person, but let me know what you guys think down below. If you guys wanna check out more framework computers, go check out the video I did on the framework desktop. It was a super small compact machine, primarily focused on AI development and AI large language models, but it was unbelievably cool. You could put pictures on the front, including Linus.